Hi, morning. Uh, my name is Megan Freed. I'm one of the founding attorneys here at Freed Marcroft. Tracy and I are together here in the Hartford office, but we also have offices in, uh, we have an, an office in Cheshire in addition to Hartford. Our practice at Freed Marcroft is exclusively limited to uh, family law and divorce is a significant portion of that. Yes. So we spend a lot of time with Tracy Ladsloffy, who is here. Tracy's a, a doctor and a licensed marital and family therapist. And this is our second webinar together, yes. which is wonderful. It is. And the idea for this webinar, which is from victimization to empowerment, actually came out of our first webinar. That's right. Um, about a month ago. Exactly. We were chatting and we're talking about the dynamic of the loss of control that mm -hmm. people can feel during the divorce process. Absolutely. And how that can have an impact on how they feel, but also how they make decisions. And how they make decisions. Yeah. Absolutely. We don't make a great decision in victim role. No. And, you know, we wanted to talk about the meaning of the word victim. Because right. it's such a loaded term. It's a very provocative term. And we specifically sure. stayed away from the term victim and chose victimization because someone can do awful things to you. You can have terrible experiences. And they can be very real. You're not Absolutely. making them up. Absolutely. It's yeah. not imagined. I mean, this is real stuff. But the word victim implies that it's a totalizing identity. And it suggests that this solely constitutes who you are. And this workshop is about empowerment. So really right. we want to talk about how even though awful things happen to you, there's a way that you can find power and exercise that. And that's how you move beyond victimization. In fact, whether it's your divorce that you're going through or, or something else, things are going to continue to happen Always. your whole life that's right. that you're not in control of. That's right. And it's really... I mean, when I when I learned about this the first time, how to how to flip, feeling like a certain situation was something that happened to me mm -hmm. rather than something that I had control over. Yeah. When I learned to make the switch, and not that it's not a constant battle, we're going to teach you how to do this, and then you're going to have to, you know, bring yourself back to it. Right. Um, but it really changes mm -hmm. how you how you view yourself and how you move around in the world. Yes, it does. So, you know, we were talking about this, that, you know, the way we make meaning in our lives is, you know, is through stories. Like we all story our lives, like we're the authors of our lives so that we have various ways that we story our experience. And the role of the victim is a very seductive role because from that position, one is disavowed of all responsibility. So right. all of the bad things that happen to me are someone else's fault. So there's a lot of blame on others. And there's something comforting about that, about being able to say, it's all you, I didn't do anything. The problem with that is that if you know you make yourself the victim of your story, then you've also given all your power to someone else or to some other condition that you've, you've surrendered all power over your story. And so that's the problem with the victim role, that there's no authority in it. Yeah, when, when, I, um, when I learned about this, I kept thinking of that quote um, that I don't remember who said it right yeah. now, but um, we, I think it's like, with great power comes great responsibility. 100%. And I think that that's the two sides of the coin, that's is right. that if you cede responsibility, you cede power, oh, and, right. and, and power and control and feeling powered in in how you make your decisions and and being in control of how you deal with situations uh, and right it is the whole shoot and match if you can figure out how to do it it really is and and i'm so glad you make this point about the relationship between power and responsibility because you can't have power without responsibility so no. when faced with a difficult situation you have to ask yourself what is my responsibility in this and right. from there you have options you can exercise which is the pathway to empowerment um, one of the things that you said in your last comment was that we're authors of our own lives, mm -hmm. and which I loved, and I wrote it down. I think that we're, have you ever been walking down the street, and you think about the soundtrack that you would play for this particular scene? I mean, cool. we truly are um, the protagonist 
in our own life. Like we, right. we think that other people's behavior, and I, I mean, I, I understand mm-hmm. that this is how we're wired, yeah. but other people's behavior, it, we put in the context of how it relates to us, right. not how it relates to them. Right. But forgetting that they're the star in their own show too. Right. We're they're doing the same thing. They're doing the same thing. And, and so that really interrelates to this. And when you said the role of the victim, uh-huh. which is a different way of, you know, when we named this webinar, we chose victimization. Right. But another way of putting victim in, in context is saying the role of the victim. That's right, because you can change roles. You can change you can roles. Have multiple roles simultaneously. Yeah, and and so so a couple of things. One of the issues about um, we're not very few of us are always cast ourselves in the victim role, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's intermittent. Sometimes we cast ourselves in other roles, right. uh, depending what's going on. But mm-hmm. one of the things that strikes me about the scholarship on choosing victimization in a particular Mm -hmm. setting is the um the fact that a victim necessarily means a persecutor right you can't be a victim or victimized right unless someone or something is doing things to you correct they have the power and you receive that's right right Right. And that's where the loss of power comes from. And, you know, a victim is someone who's acted upon. They are not an actor. And so that's where that role becomes a difficult role to stay in. Because from that position, you can never exercise any authority over your own existence. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to diminish how real it is to have someone mistreat you or to be faced with a condition that is truly awful. I mean, bad things happen that are not of our making that doesn't mean we don't have some contribution to it right but it doesn't stop other people from acting toward us in unfair no. painful illegal hurtful absolutely hurtful criminal ways that's right terrible things that's right can happen but i don't want like when i work with clients that they're i don't want them to get stuck too deeply in that part of the story i mean there's yeah. a place to mourn what hurts the mourn the loss of things to rage over injustices yeah but the next step is to figure out what role do I have in this experience? Like, what is my contribution to her? Because Mm -hmm. my contribution is where I can act and do something differently to give myself better options and a pathway toward healing and a better future. So I want very, you know, to move people toward what is it that you can do that isn't within your power that would heal you or that would evolve your life to, you know, a better place than it is right now. What are those things? So to use an example, mm-hmm. um, this, is, this is a fairly extreme example, okay. but, but, uh, but to make your point that sometimes we make up that things are happening that are worse than they are, right? True. Sometimes we blow things out of proportion, but let's not, let's not do that. Let's mm-hmm. talk about something that is, you know, not with it is inappropriate behavior to put it mildly right okay. um if you are in an abuse of a physically abusive relationship right. Right? right that happened there's no right right the a, a bad thing happened it happened to you mm-hmm. how do you where does the control come in the next mm-hmm. step is okay i can't change what has happened Right. And you're not responsible for the other person's bad choices. No. So the question is, what can you do now to take care of yourself in a healthy way? So if someone is abusing you, you know, you have the option to leave that situation. That doesn't mean that it's easy and there aren't challenges and threats that potentially take. Yes. Taking control is a lot of work. Being responsible is a lot of work. Exactly. Cutting someone out of your life that is toxic. That's right. Is a lot of work. That's right. But if someone is toxic, then that's a step, you know, you need to take to take care of yourself in a healthy way. Right. And that option exists as ex- as difficult as it may be to exercise. Right. And and the way you really get free of that person isn't just being isn't the physical separation. Right. There's a whole psychological process around detachment and recognizing you know, what's theirs and what's mine and how I'm going to take care of me independent of you. Right. And how I get 
you can remain in a victim role outside the situation mm -hmm. if you keep reliving. Yeah, I know people who've been divorced 20 years and they still harbor tremendous bitterness and animosity toward their ex. Yeah. And that's because they are wedded to this victim position. Look at that awful person who did these terrible things and they can't release it. Which they really only hurts them, which is this part that's so painful. Yes. The, the idea of it's true. Uh, the continuing to suffer because of something that isn't happening now right the other person isn't suffering no like you know right. the bitterness who, that that and also who is. even cares right, right. i mean it, that right. the seeding of that power and authority over what your current life and your future life are to that person right is just i mean if you can tell i can't stand it i hate it when people are suffering for a thing that isn't happening to them, which is right. why it was so, I was so thrilled when you said you were willing to talk about how, how you start to, because none of this is easy. Okay. I mean, it's, it's really hard to make right. the transition to, right. to flip the, the script on. Yeah. You know, I was recently talking to a, um, a gentleman who he and his wife are divorcing now. She had an affair yeah. and you know, this is one of the sort of the classic sort of breaking points in a marriage. And, you know, he's devastated by yeah. it. And he actually would want to heal the relationship if possible, but she doesn't want to. Right. So there is no repair. Now, he, that's not in his power. No. And he feels tremendously out of control about that because it's not a choice that he would have made. Right. And Either of he wouldn't have right. had the affair. Exactly. And even absent that. That's exactly right. right. So... He says to me, so you're talking to me about that I have some power here. So what I don't is feel it. That's <laughs> right. I said, well, you have the power to choose what you're going to do next. So you continue to pursue her and chase her down and beg yeah. her to come back. That's one option. It's probably not going to work as evidenced by the fact that all of you attempts so far have not worked. Right. You have the choice to continue to do that. Or you can accept what is and say, now where am I going to go from here? Yeah. So. What terms do I need to have around this divorce so I can come out of this feeling whole? Well, how am I going to take care of my children in a healthy way because I know that they're suffering? And how am I going to heal my heart so that I can go on and one day be with someone else that I can have a healthy right. relationship with? And so being in therapy and talking about his pain, his grief, his rage is part of his healing process so that he can eventually release the bitterness and the disappointment and the disillusionment and move toward another healthy relationship. It's amazing how powerful this, the victimization can feel. It's amazing how powerful the role of the victim can be, how seductive it is. Um, one of the things, I mean, this isn't an out, this isn't an isolated story, but um, this is not, a Fried Markov story. This is a, a divorce from many, many years ago that I'm aware of where uh, the, the husband and wife split, there was an affair. So, so there was that load in of, of, you know, the, the disrespect or, the, right. you know, all, all of the things the that betrayal. Yeah. Violation. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that yeah. Uh, going outside of a relationship with a marriage can create. And, it ultimately re resulted in a divorce, and that's back when lifetime alimony was was more common. Okay. So, so in this case, husband is going to be writing a check to former wife for many years. Mm -hmm. Say they were in their thirties when during the divorce. Okay, and as technology changed and direct deposit and things like that became available. Um, payor of alimony husband suggested, why don't I set this up? So this happens automatically and goes right into your uh -huh. bank account. And, and she said, no, I want you to have to write the check. So, I mean, they could have, I think they may have been divorced 25 years. Right. But I, I was he the one that had cheated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was the one who had cheated and she was the one who, I think, I think wanted the marriage to stay together also. Uh -huh. Um, and, and so is this her way of making him continue to do penance? Yeah. Work? Which unfortunately makes her do penance. Exactly. Because it means that she still carries this in her heart. Right. It's, it's an active trauma for her. Right. It's, you know, not for him. She's the right. way he does. 
the suffering that she's feeling does not affect him, which is the real, you know, even the, this is not about the desire to make, um, well, let's strike that. This is not us about saying that the desire to share some of the pain you're feeling with the person who caused that pain. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's an understandable thing. It's the problem with that is when it becomes something that you're living acutely, that in right. order to even attempt to exact the suffering, which is probably not going to be successful, right. you're suffering. But, right. You're living in it. Yes. I, I have a client I'm working with for many years now, wonderful, wonderful woman. Okay. So her husband had an affair, left her, is not interested in healing the marriage. She would have healed it if she could have. He didn't want to heal it. And, you know, five years later, she is still so angry and still so hurt. And what does she want from him? She wants him to show empathy for yeah. the pain that he caused, to acknowledge Knowledge. it. And he does in the most superficial ways. I'm sorry. You know, right. it, it lacks any real substance right. or satisfaction for her. But she needs this from him. He has moved on. Right. This, what she recognizes his life seems very happy. She continues to suffer every day because he won't give her this. And so it's incomplete for her. Right. But only she is suffering. So how do we flip that? If I, if I'm that person, mm -hmm. how do I figure out a way to let, I mean, it's like, you have to accept what is, you know, it's like raging against a mountain for being in your way. It's mm -hmm. just being what it is. It's not there to be in your way. That's what it does. It's there. It says, or I'm sorry. It's there. Right. You know? It right. has nothing to do with me. He is who he is. His unwillingness to give this to her is about some limitation inside of him. It's really not about her. Right. And so if she could accept this is who he is. He's not going to change. Now what am I going to do? Right. So what she can do is say, I release him. He's not important anymore. I'm not going to let him continue to rent space in my head anymore that, you know, I'm taking that back for myself. So my thoughts, my emotions, my energy is my directed, behavior. Yes. At what I can do to make a new life for myself, separate or apart from him. What he does, who gives a damn? Right. Does it matter anymore? He doesn't matter anymore. It's making it really about you instead of about the collection of things that happened to you or the person that did those things. Right. Which is difficult. It doesn't yeah, happen quickly. Totally. It's, a, it's a process. It's slow, but let's remember what, what the end point is that we're moving toward, which is to heal what hurts so that we can release it and move on instead of continuing to carry it around and keep it alive because that that's a toxin that we keep inside of ourselves. It doesn't injure the other. It only injures ourselves. Right. Right poisons the vessel that carries it. Yes. The, 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 the truth is that it's, it's, it, it's absolutely everyone's choice, whether or not to, to carry this um, anger or resentment or hurt around for all That's of their right. days. That's right. It, it's just that it, you, the decision to own that choice, right? Mm -hmm. Either way, I own that I've decided to try to make her, him pay, right? Right. If, if that's your choice, if that's you own that. Right. If right. I own the choice. Invested and myself in trying to make you suffer. And in fact, that's not a victim. No, that's true. Right. I have, I have owned the fact <laughs> that right. I'm, go I'm making an affirmative decision. But also not a decision that will ultimately heal oneself. No, I mean, not a good decision. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a healthy decision, but at least right claim that it's what you've chosen to make of your life. So I continue to suffer around you because I'm choosing to do that. I continue to make you the center of my universe and right. I'm directed now at making you pay. Okay. I've made you the center. You haven't made yourself the center. That's and I think doing. almost always, if you can challenge yourself, if there's a situation in which you, it, you see you're casting yourself as the victim, yeah. if you challenge yourself to own that victimhood, you'll pretty much decide to take a different path. I'm going to do something right. different with my option. Right. I only have X number of years on the planet. Right. We don't know when they're ending and I'm going to spend them doing things that feed me, inspire right. me. We're trying to find right. as much joy as we can. Right. right. What's the point of being What's here? What's the point of being here? Yeah. So we, we had a wonderful outline. 
that we have completely deviated from because this is things happen. Yeah, I love it. So I'm just going to re- re- go back to it to make okay. sure that we uh, sure. Actually, I think in our way we we talked about it. We talked about how the pro- pro- the we get to pick who the protagonist is in yeah. our story. Like we, we know that. No, what the role? We are the protagonist, and we can define that role as a victim, or as someone who's an actor in their own right, who's empowered and can make choices that can help themselves. That's a different kind of role. That's a different story to tell about yourself. It's not a very comforting story at the end of the day to say who I have been in the drama of my life is someone who has been solely acted upon, who had no options. Actually, if you think about. It's a horrible story. And if you think about actual stories, mm-hmm. books, movies, yeah. and they are heroes. Our heroes have almost always been faced with adversity. with adversity and have chosen to deal with it in a way that they've cast themselves as an actor. Exactly. Now, in some cases, an extreme actor, right? Yes, absolutely. Right? But... And the thing about empowerment is really the sky's the limit. Yeah. Yeah. You can come out of this and create whoever you want to be. It's true. And again, it does, this is not to minimize suffering. Right. You know, like one of the things that I, you know, one of my favorite books is Man's Meaning of of Man by Viktor Frankl, because he was a survivor of a concentration camp. I mean, this is a person who experienced the worst hell, you know, imaginable. But what he always understood is that you can do whatever you're going to do to my body. You can kill my family, which is horrific, but you can't imprison my mind. You can't yeah. take control of my thoughts. And from his thoughts, he was able to keep himself free. And that was his pathway to empowerment. It didn't change the fact that his body was ravaged with starvation and disease and illness and people around him died and horrific things happened. But in his mind, he chose to think about his wife and he had conversations with her and they brought him joy because he remembered all of the things that happened between them that were meaningful in a good way. You made me think of something else. I, I love that. I, that's fantastic. Um, okay. So we talked about power and responsibility yeah. and how they're two sides of the same coin. Or can't have one without the can't other. Have, <laughs> that's the deal. You want power, power take some responsibility. Right. right. And... You want power <laughs> because yes. not having power is terrible. It that's is. like, that's not, that's somebody, you're living somebody else's life. Yeah. But how do we take responsibility? What's that mean? Yeah, that one's tricky too. Yeah. Because, you know, for example, if I'm a person who's been cheated and I want to say, well, what's my responsibility? Right. You, know, you cheated on me. You broke the, the bonds of our marriage. So what's my response? That's the line. That's a very tricky right. place. Right. Now, okay, so this is not to say that. You didn't have some role in it. You know, if I talked, and I do, when I talk to the other person, they have their stories about why they went out and cheated. You know, I wasn't getting any love. I wasn't getting attention. And you didn't notice me. I felt empty. Protagonist in their own story. Yes. You know, so so they were suffering in their right. Yeah. And this in their mind justifies what they did. So it's not about whether or not the action is justified. And I think we can all agree globally. It's not justified. But that doesn't mean that, I didn't have some role in in influencing my partner's choice. And from that, I can take some power because I can say, okay, you know what? I was a checked out partner. I was tuned out. I wasn't paying attention. And now I know that that's something that I need to work on with myself. And so the next time around, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm making a different mistake, but I won't make that one. That's right. One of the things, um, one of, one of the things that one of my coaches said that I that I, I found very striking is you can so so Tracy and I have a relationship and we can look at it as the relationship is a hundred percent and you're fifty percent responsible yeah. and I'm fifty percent yes. responsible right we can do something else we can even shift it around right well you cheated and i didn't so right. you're 90 percent responsible and i'll own this 10 uh-huh. right for being a little checked uh-huh. out or you can throw out both of those paradigms and say in our relationship i am a hundred percent responsible for me 
Correct. And you are a hundred percent responsible. That's for it. it. That's and the that's key. It. Yeah. That's the key. That's the key. And and the truth is that even when you've cast yourself in the victim role, it doesn't change the fact that you're a hundred percent responsible. The deal is whether you're owning it or not. That's exactly right. So, that's right. And and I think that one of the one of the painful things about being in a victim role can be you said seductive, right? And you can really get in a cycle of it can be harder yes. to get out of it. So all of a yes. sudden, everything feels like something that's being done to you or right. someone else's fault. That's right. I remember being in a yoga class and I was in a, I put myself in a victim role about something else, right. you know, totally not in yoga, right? Okay. <laughs> outside, outside in my outside <laughs> world, life, work, I don't know. And I was in a yoga class and I was so mad at the yoga teacher for having, for talking too fast or too loud or something. Cra- I mean, this is like, this well, are you kidding me? Just <laughs> right. Morphs, right? <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that I'm in charge of whether I'm, I stay in the room, mm-hmm. how I react to the tone, right? right? I mean, you ask her to speak slower, right? I, it, it's a, it's a, it's a funny example, but it is one of the things that we do all the, all the time. Yes, it's and a great it's, I, I did catch myself in that during Savasana, I was on my back and I was, I, I thought to myself, why am I making this yoga teacher wrong for the fact that the book I was waiting for didn't come in or whatever. It was just a ridiculous standpoint. So we are responsible whether or not we choose to be. It's true. And I think, you know, as, uh, as a lawyer, one of the things that we see for people that have gone through really hard things and, and is that, there are choices that clients have to make about how their divorce is going to look. Right. And there's actually no way to abdicate. You can get advice and counsel yeah. and factors and mm-hmm. if this, then that, and you know, all of those things. That's right. But ultimately there are going to be things that you get to choose about. That's true. And it might not be the choice you want. I want to stay married, right? It might not be the choice you want, but there are choices. And with those choices Mm -hmm. comes the responsibility and the power of making those choices. That's true. They're not easy. No. But, and, and you get, gather all the data you can and you get to make the best choice. And, and, you know, five years later, you might think, oh, I actually would have done this a little bit differently. Yeah. Right. That's okay. But because right. part of the power is you only know what you know now. In that moment. Right. <laughs> and, true. and I think that being um, another thing that being in a victim mindset can create is a real difficulty making decisions. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So if it, if, if we were in a therapeutic relationship yeah. and I said, God, I just don't know what to do. I'm trying to decide whether to leave my husband. Right. You can't make that decision for me. You right. can give me sure. guidance on your opinion, the pros and cons, yeah. a context to view it in, but you can't actually make the decision. Right. And another lousy part. And not making a decision is a decision that, too. That's exactly. And it <laughs> creates suffering. Indecision is miserable. But own that not acting is a decision. So, yeah, you know, like I said, dealing with a young man who, should I divorce, should I not divorce? Yeah. I'm miserable, I'm miserable. I can't stand her. I can't. I, yeah. Okay, so I say to him, you have two options. Well, three. You can continue to do exactly what you're doing, which is awful, which right. is talk about how miserable you are, but continue to stay and complain. Now you're the victim. Right. Or you can empower yourself. And there are two pathways to empowerment. You can say, this situation doesn't work for me anymore. I'm leaving, even though it's going to be painful and difficult and inconvenient. I'm leaving. Yeah. Or you can choose to stay. But if you choose to stay, recognize that you know what she is. You know what exists between the two of you or what doesn't. So if you stay... That's your choice. It's no longer no about how she's doing something to you. She is telling you exactly who she is. And if you stay, you've chosen that. You've done that to you. And you might decide 
that's the better option. Yes, and that's an okay choice to make. But totally if you claim fine. it as your choice, then it you can feels relax. Different. Yeah, yeah, you can right. relax. Right. I'm not. You're not the victim anymore. Right. I, I know what's going on here, but this is what I want to do. I'm going with it. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to do it for this long. And these are my yeah, reasons exactly. why. And now I've put a pin in it. Yes. And I can move on and regain control over. You know. That's right. How am I going to work through this relationship? That's right. In a way that makes it acceptable to me. Right, right. I know that she's someone who in the morning, you know, is going to walk around and yell about everything. Right. So if I know that, what, what am, am I, I going do? to do in response to that? You know, so I'm going to avoid her in the morning. I'm going to put in my earphones. I mean, what am I going to do? Right, right. It's just the path from victimization to empowerment for me, if if I were to summarize everything that you've shared with us mm -hmm. today is really seeing that you aren't what's happened to you. You are how you choose to react to it. That's, that's the bottom line. And it's how you choose to respond to what has happened. It, to you. It's simple, but it's hard. Yes. Yeah, I mean, That's like, important distinction. it's simple, but it's hard. It's so much easier yeah. said than done. It's true. But, and it's not a straight line. Yeah. You're going to do a, a great job. You know what? I really think I, like, put myself as the victim star of that show. I'm yeah. not going to do it. And, and by the way, one of the strategies that you can use to sort of figure that out is just realizing it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's saying it out loud. Uh, yep. Sometimes it's calling that person and saying, you know, I made you responsible for mm -hmm. my reaction mm -hmm. to something and that wasn't fair. Mm -hmm. And you're, you then let them react however they react. Right. Because you don't have any power over what the other no. person does with it, but you have the power to speak your truth. And once you realize that you don't have any power over what that person chooses to do with it, opportunities open up. Right. There's a lot of freedom in that. Absolutely. I spend a lot of time with people getting them to just voice what their truth is. Right. And what I always hear is, what's the point? The other person <laughs> isn't going to get it. They're not going to like it. Right. They're going to react the wrong way. It doesn't matter. It's not about yeah. what they do with it. There is something liberating about speaking your truth. Right. And what happens is what, what happens. happens. Um, when I was a, a younger lawyer, I... Um, did some litigation work down in New Orleans okay. and post Katrina people had had. So in this yeah. case they were victimized yes. by a natural disaster. Yes. Talk about that. Right. Terrible. Yeah. And then, um, and then a lot of things didn't go the way that they wanted them to, or arguably should have, right. right. How insurance companies reacted, how the government reacted, right. right? So imagine that extreme situation. You don't have a house. No one's listening to you. You're afraid for your family and yourself. Exactly. Like core, you know, food, housing, shelter, basic That's things. Right. And what a very wonderful judge down there realized was that for some people, there wasn't actually a way to help them in this context win their lawsuit, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, there, we couldn't create flood insurance that didn't exist or mm -hmm. something like that. Right. Um, but what that judge realized was the power of those people telling their story. And so that opportunity would get created, um, for, for people to tell their story. And if, if it's brave, I mean, it's really hard to, to own it, own your own right. role, but Doing it just cleans it up. Mm -hmm. You just become free from it in a different way. It is freeing to be able to speak your truth. Yeah. Without blaming. Right? Right. It's that I'm going to tell you, you just, what happened and I'm going to tell you my partner. You can someone accountable. Yeah. It doesn't mean that their same. behavior was appropriate. That's right. Right. You acted very badly. Your right. behavior is inappropriate. Right. And this is what my part is. And here's what I'm going to do about this now. Right. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. Even, even if you write a letter and don't send it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. A great method. Um, you're not responsible for your spouse's behavior. Nope. But you can't control it either. 
Exactly. Right. You get both. Right. You're not responsible, therefore you have no power over it. You're solely responsible for your own behavior, which is where all your power resides. Okay. So that's it. That's it in a nutshell. You get responsibility and control. Yep. And you have to own that inaction is action. Yep. And you will feel better. Yep. And it will be hard. Yes, it will be very hard. <laughs> it will be very hard. Um, can you, all right, we, you wrote me a note about the ways to respond to a difficult situation. Okay. And they're really good because I think it's nice to have something in your head okay. for how to react. And what you said is there are two ways to respond to a difficult situation. Okay. The victimization response is you hurt me. I'm suffering because of you and I'm powerless to help myself. The empowerment way to mm -hmm. respond is you hurt me, mm -hmm. but I am exercising control over the things that are in my power. I'm choosing thoughts and actions that will allow me to be free of a bad situation and heal myself. Yes. I don't care if you make it this yeah. lock screen on your phone so that it's there, particularly when you're going through something really difficult, like the mm -hmm. ending of a relationship or, you know, a hard time at work. Yeah. We're, there are always going to be forces that make things happen that we, we don't like, That's we right. wouldn't choose that That's aren't right. right. That's right. Um, one of the great things about divorce is when we see people come out empowered mm -hmm. and usually they were the least likely to see it coming. <laughs> um, it, I, that, you know, this is usually, a, you know, a divorce wasn't their idea. Uh-huh. And the whole thing stinks because it's happening whether they like it or not. And maybe yeah. their spouse won't go into therapy with them. And they just keep trying to take actions to reach their goal, which is great. Mm -hmm. But but then it feel, when, when that doesn't work, it feels like they're being victimized again and yes. again. And when those people call sometimes during the divorce, sometimes approaching the end of it, often six months, a year, two years later, and say, I didn't believe you when you told me that I would be happy. <laughs> or, yeah. But I woke up this morning and realized I was happier today than I was when I was in the marriage. And that, this, this divorce, whether it was your idea or not, is an actual opportunity to create the life that you want. It's it's when we really figure out how to deal with something really hard yeah. that we create things yeah. that are even bigger. Like it's almost like the harder the situation you overcome, mm -hmm. the bigger your life becomes mm -hmm. if you put these pieces together. Yeah, that's right. If you can transcend that adversity, the payoffs are huge. So this is why um, being in therapy during the divorce process is so critical mm -hmm. because unlike, <laughs> unlike what a lot of people who haven't been in a therapeutic setting think, all right, mm -hmm. there's this, actually, mental health professionals and divorce lawyers could have a really robust debate about who's been more misportrayed on television <laughs> than in movies, right? Probably I mean, point. oh my gosh. But you're, you know, laying on the couch. Yes. With it's a, not how it goes. With, right. With a person who doesn't respond, right. who just lets you talk. I have friends. I don't need that, right? <laughs> I'll just journal. The, what your therapist is there to do is flip the dynamic so that you're held accountable for your own role because that gives you control and makes you free. Right, to help you find your power. Among other things. I mean, there are other things that go into And to heal what hurts. Right, and you do not, there is nothing wrong with you because you need someone to coach you through but something you've everyone, never done before. Everyone needs that. We all need help, right? I'm going to just um, note something that I, we, we can throw around terms and designations. And I think that when, when you're looking for um, a 
a therapist that one of the things that we mentioned about Tracy is that she's an LMFH, which is a licensed, oh, darn it. Yeah. licensed, licensed marital and family therapist. Correct. Okay. And what that means is that she's the type of professional that is trained in relationships. Correct. But although this victim discussion mm -hmm victim role, victimization discussion we're having yeah. is a solitary thing Yeah, where, but not really. It's about what some, it's relational. It's about what something someone has done to me. So That's I work right. with a lot of individuals, clients in, but I'm always thinking systemically right. because I understand that whatever's happening for that individual is connected to other people in their lives. Because really what we're all doing is we're being little animals that interact with other little animals, right? Exactly. I and mean, that's what, right. and they, they're all the source of relational and right. They're the source of our greatest joy yeah. and our greatest it's pains true, yeah. in many, it's in true. most cases. It's true. Um, I think that we are going to move to see if there are any questions. Okay. Um, I could do this forever. So, yeah. I, I, I always want to talk. I know. You too. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, great. All right. So, we have a question um, that came in earlier. And my apologies, it was on the outline and I forgot to do it. So, thank you uh, for writing this in. We got asked if we have any additional resources to learn more about this. Okay. So, I do. I, yeah. I have a list. And yes, you mentioned one. So, let's go. All right. Let's go back. So, you said, um, the Meaning of Man mm -hmm. by Frankel. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote down as you were talking about uh, making the shift and in, in, into responsibility and control. Yeah. Um, this is a book written by Tim Grover, who is Michael Jordan's coach. Okay, so he coached, which I think a person we, I think we can agree is one of the greatest athletes of Absolutely. all time, ever, and certainly yeah. in the modern era, and. Um, the, one of the points of, in that book that Tim Grover makes is that Michael Jordan was playing against Michael Jordan. Right. That's hard, right? Yeah. It's a lot yeah, easier a point. to be a competitive athlete playing against a team that has a shot, yeah. um, or an individual that has a shot. Michael mm -hmm. Jordan had to play against himself. And that's what we're doing, right? That's we're true. talking about playing against ourselves, our own desire to cast ourselves as, as, as a victim when things get rough, that's right. you got, it's a rough game and it's going on here. Yeah. So in a sense, like Tracy and, and her colleagues at the center for relationship and healing yeah. in Norwich and Glastonbury, yes. what they are, they're your Tim Grover, right? They're mm -hmm. the, that's the coach. Right. So that's right. Um, so the book is relentless. It's by Tim Grover. It's great. It's not long, but if you're a sports person, you know, check, check that out. If you're a book cool. sports person, check it out. I love this one. Yeah. Um, and then the other ones that I had thought of in advance, but forgot to share were, um, the empowerment dynamic, um, by David Emerald. So, okay. So Stephen Cartman was a doctor who, who wrote on the victimization triangle. And so sort of it, you have a victim and then you're going to have a persecutor, someone that mm -hmm. puts you in the victim role yeah. and a rescuer, and a, and a rescuer, someone who saves you. So for example, if you're in a victim set mindset, mm -hmm. you might cast your lawyer as your rescuer. Mm -hmm. And by the way, lawyers can fall into the victim of the fall into the role of acting like a rescuer, mm. which is disempowering too to your mm. to exactly. the person going through it. That's that's right. That's not good either. No. Nope. Um, so so Cartman is the one who figured that out. But then this gentleman, David Emeralds, came in and flipped that triangle and put put labels and a strategy around how you star in your own show in a different way. Mm -hmm. So the victim becomes the creator, the uh, persecutor becomes a challenger, someone who holds you accountable, yeah. and the rescuer becomes a coach, someone co who coaches you through. Yeah. So that's in this book. Um, it's called The Power of Ted, T-E-D, The Empowerment Dynamic. Mm -hmm. Check that out. Actually, you know what? If, um, if you'd like a copy of this book, uh, shoot us an email. We'll, we'll send it to you. So that's sorry. It's flipped. Um, 
Ted is on us. Um, we'd love to help you with that. So just, just write us a note and we'll send you a copy of this book. Also that the website for this one is powerofted.com. So powerofted.com. They have a great blog post that David actually does with his wife and, and some of their own trainers. So great resource there. Um, if you're not a writer and or a reader and you'd rather have something that you go to to help you with strategies, um, one of the things that uh, uh, most of us here at Freed Marcroft are participating in is something called the Landmark Forum. That's at landmarkworldwide.com. And it starts with sort of a long weekend in Boston or, or New York. And they really give you the tools to figure out how to flip your paradigm. Yeah. Um, so so Landmark is also a good option um, if, if being immersed, if immersion is something that is a better strategy for you. If you happen to be a small business owner, one of my coaches is named David Nagel. That's N-E-A-G-L-E. He mostly comes up at this from a business owner's perspective. So if that's something that you do, if you're a business owner or entrepreneur, um, you might want to check out his website at uh, David Nagel, David, D-A-V-I-D, Nagel, N-E-A-G-L-E dot com. And he has a, a blog that can come to your email too. Um, one of the things about staying out of the victimization setup is that you've got to gird yourself. So having something pushed at you sometimes mm. or, or keeping up with reading is, uh, is a good way to say, oh, gosh, I think I'm slipping into that again. Right. Um, so those would be the resources. And thank you very much for that question and for making sure that I do that. Um, we are out of time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for doing this for us. <laughs> we, for really, we really appreciate it. Uh, it's just, um, I see it and I've learned about it, but that is an entirely different thing than having an expert be able to speak to us on how to actually do it. So thank it you. Great talking with you. Thank you, Tracy. And thank you all. Have thank a great you. rest of your week.